So today I am going to discuss about the forensic scientist as seen of crime and criminal justice system. Because uh, uh, at this time we are only discussing the this forensic science and details. Generally, as uh, Dr. Goswami and Dr. Chaudhary already has discussed about the definition, but uh, I just say two, three words about the forensic science. Is the broadest definition means application of forensic science in the administration of the justice system. So this is the main thing. As forensic science is the application of natural science to the natural law. So here we are linking the physics, chemistry, biology, and every divisions. And it is and other scientific methods and techniques. It involves basically forensic science involves recognition, identification, individualization, and evaluation of physical evidence for the purpose of administration of criminal justice system. I am not going to discuss about the, the discipline of forensic science. Already, uh, Dr. Chaudhary has discussed about this thing. So forensic science laboratories are committed to deliver highest quality forensic report to assist the criminal justice system. So the main function of any forensic science laboratory is to provide scientific guidance to the police personnel at the scene of crime in collecting physical evidence and to undertake a diverse laboratory examination. So purpose of collection and examination of physical evidence is to link the crime with the criminal. So there are only two main things. The two main pillar of forensic science are that. First, it is multi-professional and it is multidisciplinary. During the utilization of forensic science for the proper dimension of the justice, the forensic scientist has to depend upon the investigating officer on one hand and on the presenting counsel and the judge on the other hand. So because the forensic scientist is the main chain between the investigating officer and the criminal justice system. So the investigating officer has to be specialized in the field of collecting evidence in the same way the judge and counsel have to know the science broadly so they can correlate the scientific evidence with the rest of the evidence. When it comes to level of investigation, no matter what will be the level of uh, the cases, the use and implementation of the principle of forensic science is important. The result of this forensic investigation can mark the difference between the acquittal and conviction in the court of law. This is very much important because only on the basis of report of forensic experts, the judiciary is going to give the judgment. So the main result of this forensic investigation can mark the main difference between the acquittal and conviction in the court of law. As Dr. Goswami also discussed about the innocent project. So only on the basis of forensic report the, uh, and the other uh, supporting evidence, the judiciary is going to give the judgment. So this is very much important and forensic science has come up in a big way to assist criminal investigation. It helps to interrogate suspect, victim and even witness to get the truth. These scientific methods of interrogation has made the interrogation more human and legal, thereby eliminating the third degree method also. In the field of forensic, forensic psychology is the only discipline that deals with a living human being. In some criminal cases, material evidence, eyewitness may not be available, but in all probability, the case will have some suspect and victim that is human being. So forensic psychology is an applied field of psychology which measures the behavior and criminal psychologists, they understand the behavior behind the crime offense. So now I am going to discuss some important cases as we uh, discussed with Dr. Uh, Madam Samyal, we are going to discuss only case and how the forensic science help there. So first I am going to discuss about the Priyadarsni Matru case, murder, yes, sorry, Tandur murder case, Nanasani Tandur murder case. This is very important cases. And in this case, the maximum forensic scientists, they help and all the forensic science disciplines were utilized. This was the important criminal case in India solved by the help of forensic science. In this case, Sushil Sharma murdered his wife by firing bullets to in her body because of the misunderstanding that she had illicit relationship with her classmate. After committing the sinful act, he took her body in his car to the Bagheer restaurant 
where he along with the manager of restaurant attempted to burn her in a tandoor there. Police recovered Sharma's revolver and blood stained cloth and sent them to the CFSL CBI New Delhi. So first the inspection of crime scene was done. The co-accused Kesha, the manager was there, had blood spots on his cloth. The investigating officer seized from the place of fire one uh, Pajeb ankle besides <laughs> other article also. On inspection of the car, dried blood in the dickey of the car and some hair stuck on the back side of the front seat were noticed. During the search of the flat where they received the, the police had seized from their blood stained cloth piece of the mattress from a bedroom, blood stained carpet, some hair of a woman with blood on them, one lead of bullet, five empty case of cartridges were uh, collected from the crime scene. Beside these things, some document pertaining to Bagia barbecue were also seized from the crime scene. It was also noticed that the plywood over the air conditioner had a bullet mark and code. So now the role of ballistic expert. During investigation, the bullet recovered from the body of the diseased, fired cartis cases, and one lead bullet which were recovered from flag were given to the ballistic expert for the examination. The live cartridges and ominous revolver recovered from the position of the accused Sushil Sharma at Bangalore were sent to Forensic Science Laboratory CBI for examination by a ballistic expert. The ballistic expert gave a report confirming that the ominous revolver was a firearm and was in working condition and had been fired through. So he further opinion that the five cartridge cases and one lead bullet which were recovered from the flat at Monday Mark and the two lead bullets which were extracted from the skull and neck of the disease had been fired from the said ominous revolver. So regarding, regarding the piece of plywood which had also been seized from the upper suit flat, he gave his, the ballistic expert gave his opinion that the whole observed on the plywood piece could also have been caused by the efforts at lead bullet recovered from the flat at Mandemar. So this was the opinion of the ballistic expert given in that case. And now the biology expert, the role of the biology expert in that particular case. So blood stain article seized from the Bagheer restaurant on the day of the incident and the dried blood lifted from the dickey of accused car at Malcha Mark was also sent to CFSL CBI. So DNA, that time the DNA was not established in CFSL CBI. So DNA test was uh, got conducted from CCMB Hyderabad for confirming the identity. So they also take, uh, took blood sample of Sahani parents and sent them to Hyderabad for a DNA test. The DNA report confirmed that the dead body, which was being burned at Bagia Barbecue Tandoor on the night of 2nd July 1995, was that of Mrs. Nana Sahani. So, on the basis of this report, the identity of the victim was established. So, DNA report mentioned the test proved beyond any reasonable doubt that the charred body is that of Nana Sahani, who is the biological offspring of. Mr. Harbhajan Singh and Jaswant Kaur. And finally, Mr. Sushil Sharma was found guilty with the help of forensic evidence. So in this case, after the crime scene examination, biological examination, ballistic examination, it was clear that Sushil Sharma was guilty. Another case, Priyadarshini Mattu case. In this case, this is the very important case because here the controversy was done on the DNA. As you know, DNA is, uh, we are on the basis of DNA conviction was done in many cases, but this case, there was the controversy on the uh, DNA profiling case. Priyadarshini Mattu was 23 year old law student living in Delhi. She was found raped and murdered at her New Delhi residence on 23rd January, 1996. The prime accused in this case was Santosh Kumar Singh, Mattu senior in her colleague. So evidence clearly showed that Santos had killed Pridashni Mattu. However, due to the powerful position of his father and himself, everything was denied by the judges. 
The trial court held that CBI has produced fabricated DNA fingerprinting report, which were inadmissible in the eyes of law, and evidence is adduced in unfair manner, giving Santos the benefit of doubt. They did not accept that DNA report. Again, the case which was brought DNA controversy to the forefront in the Indian legal system was rape and murder of the Pridash Nimattu. A tri trial stage, the case relied upon the DNA test of vaginal swab of the disease which later come to be positive and made ends of the justice to be met. So in this case, Pridashni Mattu case, after some time of the trial stage, DNA was submitted as evidence. Some forensic psychological technique was also applied and uh, crimes invested by the crime scene expert. And after that, they accept the report. But before, they were not accepting the DNA report. In Sophian rape and murder case, the location of crime is Sophian. There is one victim, Nilofa Jain, 22 years, and second victim was Aisha Jain, 17 years. It has been alleged in the FIR that Nilofa Jain and Aisha Jain had gone to their orchard in the evening of 29th May 2009. Missing complaint was lost. The dead body of Nilofa Jain was recovered near Rambayrana in the morning at about 6.30 to 7 a.m. in the presence of official of Sofian police station and family members of Nilofar Jain. Further, at about 7.30 a.m. on the same day, the dead body of Aisha Jain was recovered from the Ram Bahira Nala at about one half and kilometers downstream from the place where the dead body of Nilofar Jain was recovered. So police report, police report that probable cause of death Aisha Jain was opinion as hemorrhage followed by cardiovascular arrest, Nilofar Jain due to neurogenic shock. This was followed by another PM report by Pulwama. Aisha Jain confined sexual assault and cause of death by hemorrhage shock due to bleeding of multiple injuries. And Nilofar Jain cause of death was recorded as being due to neurogenic shock with the confirmation of sexual assault. The main thing was there on the basis of PMO report and the report of the uh, FSL Srinagar, the report was there that the sexual assault was done. So because of this, the village alleged that both were raped and murdered by the security forces. The protest was done there 47 days and SIT was made. And after that, the case was transferred to CBI. So CBI pro resulting in exempting the bodies for examination. Again, he started to do the examination in fresh way. And then he uh, invited the AIMS doctors from forensic medicine from New Delhi. Dr. Dogra and other team was visited the crime scene. And doctor reported after conducting the autopsy, Aisha Hyman was intact, means no sexual assault. She died due to asphyxia as a result of anti-mortem drowning and Aisha and the uh, Nilofar Jain, there was also no sexual assault and it was a simple drowning. There were no anti mortal injuries. So AIMS doctor, they conducted an autopsy and after that, the results were declared. So post-mortem on the exempted body found some allegi in the lungs of two women that exist in the area where the bodies were found. So after that, no rape or murder in Sofian CBI case. There was a very huge agitation and the Sofian people, there was a violent agitation, other things, they were against the government. But after the examination of the, the CBI, it was filed a charge against six doctors, five lawyers and two civilians, including the brother of one of the women who died for fabricated evidence. And it was clear that that this was not case of sexual assault and no murder, nothing. So different forensic psychological technique that is biological, physics, serology, fingerprint, forensic psychological technique were applied in Sofian rape and murder case. AIMS forensic medicine visited crime scene and submitted their report. After applying all technique, a strange twist to the Sofian rape and murder case, the doctor who conducted the post-mortem of the victims has reportedly told investigator that she submitted her own vaginal swab sample instead of one of the victim. 
So this is very much important. Unnecessary, the innocent people were in the jail. And because of the examination, it was clear six months later, the CBI reportedly claimed that what happened that night was a case of downing and no one is to blame. So on the basis of forensic investigation, innocent and accused both were clear and the, uh, the persons who were in jail, they were eliminated that they are innocent, they are not involved, involved in the case only because of the forensic science examination. In Lashkar-e Taiba, in terrorist Mohammed Naved Udhampur attack, detection of deception and truthfulness was done using polygraph technique. Digital forensic technique was used, fingerprint, DNA profiling, and ballistic experts. So after the examination in this case, the lead of recovery and arrest of other forensic ter other terrorist was done. In Sister Abhya case, the Sister Abhya case is a case regarding the death of Kananya Roman Catholicum, who was found dead in water well in convent in Kottayam, India on 27th March, 92. The many investigation was done from the Kerala police, then other, the case was transferred to CBI during the invest, Dr. Vaya was associated in that case and I was also associated in that case. And during the investigation of this case, various scientific techniques like narco analysis, brain mapping, polygraph test were used to solve this case. Finally, two priests were held liable for the rape and murder of Sister Abhya. This is very important, Gudia rape and murder case of Himachal Pradesh. 16-year-old girl goes missing after leaving school for home in July 4, 2017. Her body was found in forest. Autopsy indicates rape and murder. So this honorable court found Anil uh, Elias Nilu guilty in Gudia rape and murder case and sentenced him to life imprisonment. Different forensic science techniques were applied to solve the case, biology division. The conviction was based on the fact that DNA from a blood sample of Nilu matched with the semen of the private parts and cloth of the victim. It was also opinion that the DNA profile of the accused matched with the DNA profile generated from glass bottle, bite mark, and vaginal swab of the deceased. Physics division, they collect the soil sample from the crime scene. So soil samples from cloth match with the soil sample taken from the spot where the body of the disease was found. In Gudia rape and murder case, crime scene reconstruction was done on the basis of the identification of the place by accused. The scene of crime was also recreated in the presence of the CFSL expert and prepared the crime scene inspection report. Forensic odontology was also done. The expert from Molana Jad Medical College the expert, he examined the bite marks on the body and the bite marks on the body of the disease were also found to be of Nilus in the forensic investigation. Forensic psychology division of CFSL CBA, they also conduct the layer wise analysis and forensic psychological assessment was done. It was opinion that accused was found deceptive and he was involved in the crime and it corroborate with the other forensic input. So difficulties faced by forensic scientists. This is the main issues when the, uh, we are doing because forensic scientists, they are taking the sample from the investigating officer and submitting for the code. So sometimes parcels are not properly sealed, a seal is not readable. In some case, crimes in contamination usually result through the action of the personnel at the scene of crime. Many times when expert visited crime scene, they, they are the IO is not restricted and many persons, they enter the crime scene, the contamination of crime scene was happening. In general, the greater number of the personnel at the scene, the more likely it is that the scene evidence will be contaminated. So scene personnel can deposit hair, fiber, a trace material from their clothing, a destroy latent foot, uh, footwear or fingerprint. For that reason, the IO should be instructed that crime scene should be secure and maximum provided from the person, they should not uh, allow the person to enter in the crime scene. Because when the team visited in the crime scene, many personnel were there, so they can destroy, they can contaminate it over the crime scene. Securing the scene of crime is not done by the IO. Unwanted access should be stopped and contamination control is not done by the local police. This is the main problem. When the forensic scientists, they visited the crime scene, 
so there is many contamination so contamination control should be done by the local police and submission of evidence for forensic examination as soon as possible so before using kit items i use sometime does not clean and sanitize their hands so some microorganism is is that they can contaminate the blood sample so preservation and the biological sample specifically specifically dna sample is remarkable evidence in the medical legal case as by incorrect manner of collection it can damage and degrade very crucial evidence like dna so many times the local police they are not collecting the dna sample in proper way and contamination occurs when dna from another source get mixed in the with the, with the sample being collected sometime investigator touches sneeze bleed on a sample many times i use a non sterilized container so that create the problem for the forensic scientist for the analyzing the dna sample for chemistry division for petroleum products minimum quality is not sent to the laboratory so how they will examine because they are giving very uh, very small uh, petroleum products and not giving the minimum quality in trap cases proper quantity of the wash is not sent the by io and they are saying they give the report if the proper wash is not there how the expert will give the opinion many time exhibit collected by not using hand gloves gloves they are not using the gloves and they are collecting the sample and giving there in biology division maximum time liquid blood sample are not proper kept for example in they should kept in ice pack in thermophos flasks but they are not kept in there so it uh, sample was contaminated blood stain clothing in wet damp condition collected from scene of crime submitted very late so as it should submit it should be submitted as soon as possible blood stain clothing should not given in wet condition it should be air dry so sometimes i you pack such wet exhibit in air tight container and polythene pouch so that was very contaminated because when the expert opened the sample cloth are packed in wet and moist condition so many organism developed there so this is the problem faced by the forensic scientist when they are dealing with the examination of the biological sample so in physics division in voice examination cases transcript of question and specimen voice recordings are not provided or sometime incomplete transcript is provided so that is a main problem and uh, the marking on parcel and description given in the memo is not matching or not accurate so that is again create the problem the specimen the specimen voice recording must contain 15 to 20 clearly audible common sentence word with respect to question wise recording of suspect and the common sentence word should be repeatedly at least three times but generally i o submitted in the lab 200 300 400 calls so un unnecessary it is the wastes of time of the expert and the burden of the work also because they are matching only on the basis of the 15 and 20 clearly audible common sentence and words they are giving the opinion only on that basis so they should uh, restrict i should rest, restrict to submit the phone call and detail the recording speed of both question and specimen voice must be the same because generally the subject when they are submitting the report the recording speed of both question and specimen voice is not the same so that again create the problem for the expert in document examination the document should not be folded at any stage but many time when they are submitting they they are folding and during collection and packing and transportation but i have many time they folded the document exam the documents and submitting in the lab it is highly advisable to restrict to using a staple pen punch hole a tag hole while making bunch of documents but generally i they are they are not when the person who is submitting the document they are not they are using a staple pen they are hole punching holes and tag holes and sometime absence of similar comparable material this is the main thing in document examination every time the expert need the similar comparable material mismatch of detail of exhibit in forwarding letter in case of photocopies absence of earlier generation photos copies is not available and sometime in terrorist case the terrorists they are highly trained 
so they are they are trying to disguise they are giving the disguise writing also so that is that because of that reason the similar comparable material is required for the document examination in fingerprint sometime we are getting the threat letter letter for ransom letter of claiming responsibility in militant act should be collected by using hand gloves in transparent polythene plastic envelope separately each type of exhibit should be packed separately in a specially designed container because sometimes weapon having a smooth surface there is a chance print but when they are packing in that way so we are not getting any fingerprint digital forensic is a challenge in most of the case in cyber forensic lack the necessary qualification and ability to identify a possible source of evidence and prove it this is the main challenge nowadays beside most of the that time electric evidence is challenged in the court due to its integrity in every time in the forensic expert they are facing this problem in the absence of proper guideline and the non existence of proper explanation of the collection and acquisition of electronic evidence get dismissed in itself the presentation of digital evidence is more difficult than its collection because there are many instances where the legal framework acquires a soft approach and doesn't recognize every aspect of cyber forensic in uh, recent in uh, jagdev singh versus state of odisha case honorable high court of delhi while dealing with the admissibility of an intercepted telephone call in a cd and cdr which was without a certificate under section 65b of the indian evidence act 1872 the court observed that the secondary electronic evidence without certificate of under section 65b of indian evidence act 1872 is not admissible and cannot be looked into by the court for any purpose so there is a limitation of our indian evidence act has very limited approach it is not able to evolve with the time and address of the e evidence are more susceptible to tampering alteration transportation uh, transposition etc the act is silent on the method of collection of e evidence this act is totally silent on the method of collection of e evidence it only focus on the presentation of electronic evidence in the court by accompanying a certificate this means no matter what procedure is followed it must be proved with the help of a certificate so change is technology due to rapid change in technology like like operating system application software and hardware reading of digital evidence becoming more difficult because new version softwares are not supported to older version and the software developing companies did provide any backward compatibility which also affects legally so this is the because of the technology change so we need every time the latest software in digital forensic technique so these are the challenges in forensic science oversight and accountability fragmented ecosystem multiple stakeholders quality standards and ethical dilemma so the science and technology recently committee report advocate that there should be a forensic science board so science and technology committee has given report that the uh, establishment of forensic science report board chaired by a senior judge with the broad representation from senior forensic scientists academics and police officers they recommended the the dst organize after doing some research they make the report ki there uh, there is a need to develop a forensic science board chaired by a senior judge and the members should be the senior forensic scientists academic people and the police officers the importance of creating a forensic science board as an arms length body to be responsible for the coordination strategy and direction of the forensic science to deliver a strategic and accountable leadership that represent all the main stakeholders because as a forensic science the crime committed crime is committed evidence collected evidence submission analysis carried out in laboratory analysis result of analysis evidence interpretation then report in interpretation and presentation presentation of finding in the court the police police they are doing eye witness evidence intelligence gathering interview interrogation and decision to prosecute 
So now this is the judicial outcome. So different stage of the process and how forensic evidence and human decision making are integral at each stage. So that's why the uh, DST and the, this uh, um, Department of Science and Technology, they, sub, they recommended to make the for, forensic science board because there are some challenge, there are some absence of guideline and standards for digital evidence. All over India, we are not following a simple guidelines. So different, different laboratories, they are following their uh, different guidelines according to their lab protocol. So now this is the main time. Uh, ethical dilemma is also there. Interpretation of any analytical data and presentation of testimony in court of law. Provincial credential is important. Laboratory analytical procedure. Privately employed forensic scientists is nowadays publicly employed forensic scientist, obligation to the forensic science profession and professional skill maintenance. So there are many ethical dilemmas. So the forensic science board can handle all these points with the help of academic people, with the help of police person, and with the help of senior forensic scientists. So thank you.